back from the networking break. Um, we are excited to have a kind of a switch over to talking about the HCPs now. I think we've been talking a little bit about general um, with the patient experience and with how we get connectedness between apps and patients and healthcare providers. So we're going to take a turn and talk more about the healthcare experience um, through the, the healthcare provider or the um, HCP, the doctor. Um, and um, I want to welcome Courtney and Robin and Stephanie to the panel. Um, maybe you guys can just talk a little bit about, tell us a little bit about yourselves. If there's a disclaimer that you need to give, which we all know, um, feel free to do that as well. So Courtney, I'll start with you. Great, thanks, Kristen. Hi, everyone. My name is Courtney Kramer. I work at Merck on the Keytruda marketing team, but more specifically the head and neck cancer indications of Keytruda. And also, as we're all here to discuss today, um, the HCP marketing, as well as our um, further digging into that, the digital strategy. So thanks for cool. having me and yeah. I look forward to the discussion. Thanks. Um, Robin, how about you go next? Hey everybody, Robin Kamen, Gal Derma, which is uh, hopefully all of you know is a dermatology focused company. I am stacked against global omni channel and um, innovation and very involved in everything we're doing with HCPs. Cool, thank you. And Stephanie? Hi, everybody. Thanks for taking the time for or to join us uh, today. I know everybody's schedules are busy, so I appreciate it. I am Steph Garrison, and I lead uh, digital marketing for the U.S. for Adorcia. And my disclaimer, as most of us have, my views and, and opinions that I express are my own and not of my employer, Adorcia Pharmaceuticals. Oh yeah, sorry, should have said that. Also another <laughs> disclaimer, I am in New York City where it's a little bit noisy, so apologies in advance. Yes, we'll know you're the sirens, but that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks you guys for joining us. I think, um, you know, as we've been talking about how connecting data and connecting conversations and, and getting to the healthcare provider is not always an easy task. And I think maybe talking a little bit about what you guys are you know, how you're approaching the HCP using technology, maybe first start there and give an example of just where you are connecting with HCPs, um, you know, in a different way. Um, we know, you know, with remote engagements or through other types of channels, what are you looking at um, doing? And anyone can start or... Stephanie, you want to go? Or... <laughs> I will start. Uh, those of you that know me uh, know that I'm a huge fan of EHR. Um, and over the years, EHR has evolved and become, in my words, more nifty. Um, <laughs> get to your HCPs unbranded and branded, also incorporating um, patient pieces to that at point of care. So EHR, I'm a huge fan of. Also, over the last couple of years, we've had to move to a more virtual environment. So figuring out how is the best way to meet the HCPs where they are, most of the time virtually. Um, and then the, the BAU kind of, kind of things, um, you know, looking at, at Viva, we're doing Salesforce uh, for our CR, CRM at Adorcia, um, Crossix data, EHR already mentioned, so those are, those are my big, my big buttons. Cool. Um, Robin, do you want to share how Galderma is approaching the physician? Yeah, we're doing um, much of the same with very targeted content. And so when we come back around, I'd really love to hear from Stephanie how everything you just mentioned is playing together, um, how you are dealing just within your treatment area, but if you're also coordinating with anything else that's going on targeted to the same HCP group. Yeah, I think one of the things we find out at these conferences is that we're not alone and we all are dealing with so many of the same challenges. So I think it's great to hear, you know, how people are doing a little bit different things or how you've approached different parts of the organization to get things through. Um, Courtney, how, what's your big um, HCP push right now with technology? 
Yes. So from a technology standpoint, I would say, again, agree with everything Stephanie and Robin have uh, communicated, although um, one major initiative uh, from an overarching oncology and Keytruda franchise perspective is um, many of you may call it something different or know it as something different, but that is uh, next best engagement. So again, it's taking all of the things Robin and Stephanie have said, like personalized content, but really um, customizing the journey based on the interactions with the HCPs so that it's not just our messages being served to them in the order or cadence that we think is important. It's more, um, you know, taking the feedback and gathering the data from their interactions and then serving up the next best appropriate piece of content based on their behaviors. So I would say that was one of the biggest initiatives, both from the Keytruda to Head and Neck Cancer and a franchise uh, perspective. Yeah, that's great. And I guess, yeah, Stephanie, do you want to um, talk to Robin's question? That'd be awesome. Absolutely. So I'd love to be able to tell you more, but we are in launch mode now for next year. Uh, we are going to be, you know, FDA and DEA willing, um, launching an insomnia product next year. So we are in the midst of that, but I would say holistically what we're looking at and what our, our plans are with strategy and we look at, you know, our op plan, our tactical plan and, and all of these things and how everything fits together is we are very focused on the insomnia product. You know, it'll be a consumer product that needs an RX. So we look at it from that lens making sure that what we're putting out content wise and that i couldn't agree with you more uh you could you know have six million emails not that you would send them all out but if the content stinks all you need is one email or two emails with really good content and then you build right looking at your engagement um so we're, we're looking at all of the things that we have in our in in our tool back so are we that we could build again salesforce using them as a crm you know, they have mobile studio and audience studio and integration studio and all of these parts and pieces to the CRM that we will be using for customers, patients and HCPs. And that to me is where I think that we're in a really lucky spot to, I mean, it's a lot of work building everything from scratch, right? Um, but putting it in place and thinking about now and then a year from now and two years from now, what we want to be and how we want to reach all of our customers is is what we're focused on right now. Yeah, and a, a follow up to that because I think that's really crucial. So everything that you just described takes a ton of work. I'm guessing both within your organization and then you might have some vendor support. Um, so just loosely, can you tell us all of the different tasks that go into that? Right, I mean, I'm guessing it starts with, you have to identify first who's your target audience and then all of the media buying that goes along with that, as you said, the content, but then, and can you share with us um, which CRM you're using? Yeah, so the CRM platform we're using is from Salesforce. Uh, okay. And we basically bought everything that they're selling. <laughs> <laughs> they did. The Salesforce has a way of doing that. Basically, they don't let you off the phone, right, until you agree to sign yeah. up for anything yeah. from there. Um, now, I will say that, that they've been they've been really great. We have a team um, a team overseas uh, that helps us. And we also have people in the United States. We have a consultancy that's helping us navigate all of the Salesforce stuff. Um, but for me, it's really, so I started with Endorsia in January and a lot of the things were already starting to move, uh, especially like the Salesforce uh, negotiations and contracts. But first it's looking at what capabilities you have in, in house. And because we're new in the US, I was employee number 20, uh, we're up to a 110 now. We are, you know, we, our assessment of what do we have built? Nothing. We have stuff overseas, but building it in the US. The so one looking at what, what technology and capabilities and infrastructure we had here, which was nothing, and then figuring out, okay, then let's figure out what we want to build and then get the, the support in place in US resources and then overseas. 
Yeah, and because I think that's so important because a lot of times when you're first starting up a CRM, at least in um, our experience, you don't know everything that needs to go into it, right? It's one thing to pick the technology vendor to try to scope what you think you're gonna to wanna to do, but so much it rests on that content piece, uh, what types of content you're gonna put into the system, who is it targeting, how much, and then what's the next call to action. And a lot of times it's one thing to do that from a creative standpoint, but you really need the integration specialist, right? To spin that up into something you can actually put into the CRM and get it to do what you want it to do. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that we did well early on was when we bought everything from Salesforce um, was, okay, we want <laughs> to have the mobile studio piece. We want to have, um, they it used to be audience studio, but now it's called integration studio. We wanted to have um, all of their, the social listening capabilities that they, that they have, that we have, that they provide, we have access to. The identity and consent is cloud for all of your opt-ins, so that's not managed over here in, in a vacuum, and you have to bring all that data back in. It's all within Salesforce. So, and, and particularly with the, with the social media, and I saw, I think it was, it was Paul's chat, um, we are looking wide. You know, nothing is off the table for us. Um, we are a, yes, we are a small biotech company, but we think huge. And that's one of the things that, that I'm lucky enough to be as the head of digital, being able to, to have a piece of all of that. Yes, we're doing websites and CRM emails and banners and retargeted banners until cookies go away. Um, and preparing for that, that landscape, uh, when, when all of the, the big tech guys, you know, we, you know, privacy and no more cookies. So all of that Social, yes. Texting, yes. EHR, yes. Basically, we're saying yes to yes. almost everything you can think of. I mean, I think on some aspects, while you may feel like life is crazy, the, to be that small company but thinking big is a huge flip from a lot of us who are in bigger companies thinking small sometimes and very narrow in the approach so it's complicated and challenging. Whereas if you've got that broad mindset of testing and learning and see what works and see what comes out of it, you know, what a great place to be in. Um, you know, I, I'd say, Courtney, maybe you are definitely with a, a bigger one. I've worked with Merck before, you know, I've been at Merck. So I know we know those big companies and the challenges. Is there, um, where are you facing some challenges that um, maybe can help someone else see how you've addressed that with some of the bigger company perspective? Yeah, absolutely. So again, agree with everything uh, Stephanie is saying. I mean, it's like, but I think even again with the next best engagement initiative, it's like taking all of our content um, and putting it in this engine and having machine learning and AI um, really, really help us. And then, you know, getting the data to see to Stephanie's point, like test and learn what's working, what isn't fail fast. And then, you know, come back to, um, from a creative perspective or even a strategic imperative and such, and, you know, make any shifts or tweaks that are needed. So all of that, um, happens much quicker than it, than it used to. So, I mean, I guess from a bigger organization perspective, um, you know, obviously we have a lot of guidelines and processes um, that sometimes can bog us down. However, I will say we, um, you know, in the past year in Merck Oncology, um, and I think prior to this in other therapeutic areas, have adopted an agile marketing mindset um, and framework. And so that has um, greatly improved our um Lead to success, failure, and you know, helped us um, test and learn much quicker um, to make impact um, with our HCP engagement. Yeah, I think pharma has taken that shift to agile, which I think is going to help immensely. I know the pandemic triggered us to be more digital, but I think you know, also merging that with agile is going to help a lot in terms of speeding things up. I hope. Um, we and have one question. To, oh, I'm sorry, if I can say quickly to Courtney. Uh, first of all, and with Robin, I think Robin, I uh, saw, so was also at Pfizer. Uh, I was at Pfizer for about five years. I love Big Pharma. Has, has anybody uh, not yeah. been at Pfizer? I know, I was going to say, me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would say that, that um, you know, one of the advantages of that, of being at a, a larger, more established, you know, 
been around for years and years and years company is that, you know, now I'm having to, to work and write all of our social media policies. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, if I was somewhere else, I could just pick that, you know, up off the shelf and we'd be ready to go. Yeah. Or edit, which is a lot easier than creating. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. 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 That that's, true. that's true. I will say, um, and sometimes like even in the bigger organizations, like you already have those policies, but with all the shift that we have in social media and digital opinion leaders and influencer marketing, um, we always need to, you know, re-examine those policies as well, because as I've quickly come to find, it's like, you know, the guidance is really loose and it's not always up to date, even with the big organization. So, yeah, that's very true. Um, we did have one question um, also that came in about social listening. Stephanie, I know you were talking about that in terms of, I, I think we've all maybe looked at that to see how can we hear from our customers in a way that they don't know we're listening, right? And and I think, how do we guard against complications like bots or spam? How have you addressed that in your organization, if you have? We are just getting into that uh, with the the social studios and the, the interaction studios with Salesforce. So I don't have a full answer for you, but those will be the kinds of questions that we will be asking ourselves. Um, and then, I, and I don't work for Viva, but their CrossX data platform is, is, is a marketer inspiring, awe-inspiring, but as a consumer, I think it's a little freaky. <laughs> um, all of the data that they can, that they can pull in. Um, and just really quickly, I see Thad, uh, Thad and I used to work at Pfizer together. Uh, he's <laughs> at, a, at a great EHR place now. I think one of the, one of the things that I personally haven't yet to crack, um, but hopefully we'll be able to with, with our launch is the patient part of, of the EHR. We're not quite there yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, is all of these questions back back on the HCP side, it's a lot more challenging right now because the patient side is still uh, the pathways, let's say, are known, including how you really run a CRM and how you do it effectively. Mm -hmm. um, the paid media side is a little more narrow on the HCP side, but also there's the opportunity because HCP, I think, is newer in most organizations than patients. Um, you can run a mock basically, and you have a ton of technology at your disposal and you can just say, you know, like, ooh, that sounds really good. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. What you need to figure out is, is does it serve a business purpose? So often we all have pressure to put something new and cool and fun and interesting into place. And it's great to pilot stuff, but you need to understand what, uh, how does this fit into everything else I'm doing? Because because of folks like Salesforce, we now have um, a gazillion new channels that we can utilize to get in front of HCP. But the problem is too often it's the same HCP and we're still not um, targeting those messages well enough. Now, understandable, it's not just pharma. This is every industry that is learning into this. And you guys know as customers, right, from, from all the Salesforces and everybody else who might be listening into this, you market us the same way that we market our customers. How many times have you sent me, right, yet another email saying exactly the same thing as the first email? Now, maybe you have good CRM tracking that tells you that you have to send me the same message 10 times before I give you a response. I'm telling you, 10 times same message, probably no go with almost anybody. So we are not quite there yet, and it's not just pharma. But what we have to be careful of is that we um, do not annoy those customers by testing out um, too much of a good thing, right? You cannot go whole hog with new technologies and with multiple technologies rapid fire. It needs to be very thought through and coordinated. And it's not just your brand, but it's, you know, uh, so Keytruda, I'm really curious about Keytruda, which is a juggernaut, right? established brand. So even with something like that, where you may not be the only oncological brand in the portfolio, how do you make sure that those key Truda messages are playing nicely with all of the other messages? So I'm curious if you have any experience about, um, you know, how do you coordinate everything that you're saying to those head and neck folks yeah. um, and anything else? 
Yes. Um, so that is one of them, our major challenges, right? And we have progressed so, um, so that we are not sending, you know, 30 emails to the same customer because, you know, from a head and neck cancer perspective, those customers are also treating lung cancer. They're also treating melanoma. So um, we have, you know, taken a look from a franchise perspective and then also like, um, you know, the individual treater perspective, like what are the cancers that they treat and tried to make a more holistic um, customer journey. Um, and one of those things like to address like your specific question, Robin, is like max touch points for all the oncologists that treat those different types of cancers. While it's not perfect, right? Because we have community oncologists that they could treat even more than those specific. But um, we're starting there um, and, and trying to do it by, by segment and then also from a pan tumor perspective. And again, I mean, we're fortunate with this next best engagement, all of that data helps us so that we are not annoying, oversaturating. I mean, you know, none of those things are going to get any of us to our objectives. Um, so and those I'm are sorry just- if you if you said it. Who are you, who are you using for that next, next best action? Which technology is doing the predictive AI? Yes, so we have many uh, um, partners that are working with us on that. Um, ZS is one of them really helping us. Um, and then like all of the vendors, you know, that we all probably typically work with, Oximony, Medscape, what have you. Um, you know, we have certain parameters uh, of each of them and all of their programs in order to be included in the next best engagement. Uh, but ZS is one of the, ma the main partners. Um, that we're working with to inform the AI and the data. Mm -hmm. and so you're using their technology platform. It's not just their consulting. You've actually hooked up their technology. Okay. Yes, and I would say I'm not the expert on that platform and the initiative because we have a whole other team that just works on next best engagement and then like all of the indication brand leads funnel into that, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is there something you guys, you know, in the in the prepping and or, you know, these journey maps that we all create to target the customers, is there a functionality or an approach that you wish we had or that we wish, you know, something something that we haven't touched on yet? Is there anything where you feel like, well, I wish we could do that? Sort of throwing that at you guys from left, <laughs> left field. But I'm just wondering if there's something that you've thought of this, like, geez, that's really hard to get across or we haven't gotten to it yet. I mean, I guess, Stephanie, you're doing everything. <laughs> so. Right, right. We're not, like, we're not leaving anything, like I said, anything off the table. Maybe, but yeah. We can I have you come back next year and tell us what you wish worked or worked. Better. Yeah, this time next year, I'll tell you exactly what worked and what didn't work. Um, I think for me, it really goes back to, to Robin's question when I was thinking about, you know, what technology I wish that I had. And for me, it's really, um, what am I solving for? You know, right now I'm trying to solve for everything and I'm in launch mode and, and the, the solve is, you know, launch, right? Um, but with, for new technologies, you know, I think it's important not just to, to follow a shiny object or, you know, you know, if Salesforce comes out with something again next year, am I automatically going to sign up for it? Uh, I have to think about, you know, is it, is it something that I need to be solved? Like, and will this, will this do it for me? Or can I, you know, take a look at what I've already got in Salesforce or what I've got available to me in Viva or what I've got in EHR that can can do the same thing. It just takes a little bit more work, mental work, than just saying, you know what? Yes, I'll just buy something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think launch mode. I've learned that too. In the in the launches, it's very broad reaching, and it's really that test the response instead of testing the the outward bound. Um, so that's that's going to be interesting to hear what you come back with and some of that. Um, those learnings. Um, and I guess, how about, you know, Robin and Courtney, when you're talking to the physicians, are there things you've seen that work better or um, have not been that engaging? Or like, what are the learnings that you guys have had in some of your engagement? 
Yeah, I think one to just jump back to what Stephanie was saying. Oh, sure. One of the one of the things, and really, it was your 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 good question, Kristen. I think mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I wished I had were there is a little bit of a black hole around communications that Field Force have with HCP yeah. that are not recorded. Mm -hmm. So while I'm really jealous, right, that Stephanie can see almost any action that a patient takes, we have a little bit, right, of that black hole or a uh, solid wall where we don't know everything. And I think that's also because of just the way the HCP universe is and regulations. And even though Doximity um, and CERMO can be good partners, they can't give us necessarily, right, that individual level. Um, we get more of an aggregate. So my wish, right, like what I would love for my holiday present this year is if we could get a true 360 of the HCP. But um, what I think works best is we need to answer a question that we know they have with basically not bullshit, right? Like we need to truly answer their question or we need to do a better job of anticipating a real need. So mm -hmm. when we can figure that out, I think that's that works really well. Yeah. And I think part of that too comes from one, the customer remembering that they're also a person or a customer mm -hmm. in their workplace as well as the real world because expectations could be higher, which will force the the environment or the you know all of us to do better in touch in getting to them what they really want, um, or addressing their exact content needs or when they want to be um, engaged. Um, but then also, um, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. Connecting them at, at home, but also at privacy. Like I was thinking, yeah. you know, when they've opted in, which we don't always make them do. So from a privacy standpoint, if we're opting them in, we do have that right to know who they are. We would know them just like we would know a patient. So I think it really gets to us customer data management to another level and so that we can know more about them because they're telling us, I want to talk with you more. Um, and that's something where I think we, from a privacy standpoint, have held back because they're HCPs, whereas really they're also customers. And so maybe it just involves getting a little bit deeper into the engagement with them on a data level. Um, well, that is great. Let me see if there's any other questions from our audience. I do not have any right now. Um, I guess, is there anything that you guys are seeing in the, in the future? Um, I know, Stephanie, you've got the launch coming, so we'll hear more about that um, someday. I'm excited to hear that. Um, are there things that you guys have that are coming that you could touch on um, if it's, um, you know, not too... Um, private, whatever it is, if there's something that's coming in the future for any of you that are, you know, new HCP approaches or things that you've got planned. Yeah, so this is not a, a new HCP approach in the grand scheme of things, <laughs> but um, Galderma has not had a, at least in the U.S., an RX-specific HCP portal. So we are mm -hmm. launching one, but we've reconcepted it a little bit. So that'll be the secret sauce. I'll send it to all of you guys, but we're trying nice. something a little new. Um, and it goes to everything that we've been talking about. You know, how do we figure out what content is right and then what's really the right um, delivery system for it? Yeah, that's great. Courtney, how about you? Anything? Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, nothing like earth shattering new. I mean, one of the biggest challenges that we have um, is how do we communicate all of our data, because it is a lot, even for oncologists, how do we make that into more digestible, consumable pieces of content, um, as opposed to you know, having, in our case, we have four KM curves in our clinical trial. We have monotherapy, com combo therapy. So we, as a brand and a, as a head and neck cancer team and all of the teams, you know, have that challenge of like, we need to make this content more consumable for our HCPs, but also compliant and, you know, within uh, regulatory and medical and legal guidelines. So, I mean, that's something that, like, as a brand, it's just a challenge. Um, 
Yeah, that's true. I mean, I think, <laughs> yeah, and I think that goes, that talks a little bit to the customers is changing in their time that they'll sit and listen, right? So making the cus the content to this, these little chunks where they don't mm -hmm. have to commit an hour and 30 minutes to sit through an entire webinar or, you know, a recording of a session that they might have missed. Right. Um, or even revisiting one that they attended because they don't really have that time. So really breaking things down into those smaller bits is really going to be helpful, I think, for that customer experience to be better. Um, and I think that's great, Robin, with the portal, because I think a lot of companies try that and it's like, where do you put the solution, right? What is it that you're trying to convey? Um, so, and it also, to both your points, oncology and dermatology are very broad um, customer bases, and they're usually treating multiple multiple things, not necessarily what our product treats. So it helps to build the better experience for them that they can rely on you, not just for brand information, but also for some more information that's helpful. So, yeah, exactly. you know, I think that's great. Yeah, because back in the day, you know, Pfizer was a great one for standing up um, websites, and it was, you know, kind of the only place you could go. But in the last mm -hmm. five years, probably even more than that, Right. An HCP who needs dosing information, uh, if you had them rank where they went to get it, right. uh, you know, a pharma website is probably like way, way, way down. Yeah, There's exactly. No, no real need to go there, especially I think somebody put an EHR question into the chat. You know, if you've got the EHR open on a screen all day long, one stop shopping, they've done a really great job. Now, a lot of EHR, as you know, are closed to pharma. Otherwise, it's just purely an advertising play. Yeah. Right. So we would love you know, that to get more, more in the face of our customers from a, right from the screen of an EHR, but it, that is super challenging. So we. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's another one where I see privacy has sort of kind of scared us, right? Because it's really it doesn't have to be scary. It's this very big brother of the, the they've clicked a diagnosis and now we can't talk to them because it's patient information, but it's blinded in a sense. And so that is something where I think the industry needs to push a little bit more and say, how much further could we go? Because it is about education, not just about selling. Um, and what can we do to help the physician in that moment? And not just, you know, it's not just product related. Yep, that's a, that's yeah. a great point. That's a great point, yep. That's awesome. Um, well, I, you know, I think this, is, this has been really fun to talk with you guys. I don't know, if, is there any last thoughts of, wisdom that you want to share with the group before we are um, closed out and moved on to the next session and where I feel like Seth will pop in and, and tell us to stop. We never know when that will happen or not. So, um, but. Well, I think I would just say what I think, I think the, the question, one of the questions that we were prepping on was, you know, what is like something new for technology or something for 2022? And in my mind, you know, and maybe because I was, chatting with my sales folks yesterday off-site, it's really looking at, you know, we went through this like all in person, sometimes on the phone and then all virtual. And that made you know me happy because I'm digital and a lot of stuff got got jumped to the front. But now as we we even like individually and as people and then as farm companies and our sales reps, you know, how is in person going to fit back into our ATP engagements. I think some ATPs are gonna be like, yeah, no, I, you know, I don't want a coffee. I don't want to, I don't want anything in person. Um, but I think uh, that some ATPs will, and then it's, it's how to, it's kind of like shifting the mentality back. Well, yes, we will have real hybrid in person, you know, and virtual and how that's really gonna play out like in the, on the ground. That's a good point. Yeah, fully, fully integrated multi-channel truly all the all of it together yeah yeah and, and i feel like too with that being said um like i feel like it used to be like non-personal and personal promotion and now it, that's not really how it is right it's like we're creating digital resources for our field representatives to exactly. engage with their customers um both in a personal forum and a non-personal forum so digital is really you know, overarching in both of those spaces. Um, and so, you know, really pushing that and driving that forward. And it's like, we have to do even more because um, our customers, to your point, Stephanie, it's like a hybrid model. Some of them are gonna wanna meet in person and some of them aren't. So they, 
you know, we have to have the resources for both interactions. Yeah, it really goes to measuring and keeping track of the real customer preferences, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be important. And I think, I mean, real quick, if anybody can address measuring success in a couple of seconds. Um, we did have a question. Has anybody got any specific secret sauce there? I mean, it's really- well, I do. I first want to say hi to Margaret. We used to work together. Um, <laughs> so just really quickly for me, it depends on the channel. You know, RX is, yeah. is you know, like a go-to, right? One-on-one. Mm -hmm. If you have low opt-outs, it means your email is probably doing something good, right? Your ACPs aren't leaving you. Website mm -hmm. metrics and then rep feedback. You know, what is working for them virtually and and in person, you know, the speaker programs, the the leave behinds, all of the detailing, all of the all of those pieces, rep feedback can be really important. Yeah, yep. I mean I would echo that and also or I mean we look closely at engagement, drop offs, like it's not just did they not open rates, right? It's like did they actually move past that initial um interaction to and you know how much time did they spend once they got to that to that next point. Um, so that's like some of the things that we really look at um, is like engagement and how much time was spent once they get there. Awesome. Robin, any other, any last second words? Nope. Yes. I think it's just, you know, pick your, pick what KPI is the most important to you per channel, one or two, track them religiously and, you know, don't be afraid to admit if something's not working. Yeah. Good point. That's great. Great way to end it. Thank you guys so much, Courtney, Robin, Stephanie. Thanks for your time. This was fantastic. Nice talking with you. And we'll uh, see you guys, everybody, jumping over to the next session. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.